If you only learn one thing today, it should be that lizard people do in fact walk among us. But if you learn two things, it's gonna be this, okay? You'll never forget this. The D and the G strings, right? When you play it open, the D string is a D. You may not have known that. Open G right here, watch this. Open two four, open two four. These notes are always gonna sound great with two of the most popular chords in history, G major and D major, okay? So today we're gonna combine just these, one, two, three, four, five, six notes with these two monster chords. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is just a G chord, we can do this. Or a D chord. Okay, so really simple stuff like this can add a lot to a very, very basic chord. So we're gonna show you how to do this. I'm rocking out the D'Angelico Lexington XL for this video. Now, so let's start with just a, a G major chord, right? So middle finger three A, three E, pointer finger two A, ring finger three B, right? Or if you're nasty, you can do ring finger three on the high E string. We're not gonna get into that because that's a lizard person thing to do. That's how you can tell, by the way, how they make a G chord. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take your pointer finger, act as a free agent to get that hammer on, on the D string. Open two, okay? So now what we're actually doing is we're turning this D note into an E, D, D sharp, E, right? So if we just have that, you can see this is adding an E to a G chord, we can count through the G scale if you're interested in that, G, A, B, C, D, E, and making kind of like a G major six sound. I'm not so much worried about the name of the chord, I'm just worried if it sounds cool, right? So we have this. And then just something like that, right? So after we get that hammer on, I'm gonna take this, strike the D string again, run it to the fourth fret, this is an F sharp note, them back. A cool thing that you could do is because that open G string is right next to the D string, you can hit an open G and it kind of solidifies the genus of that phrase. And then maybe if you kind of go back and open it up like that, so then when I open that D string up, that could be a transition to a D major chord, which again, the reason that this works so well is because both chords are in each other's key. So in the key of G, the D chord is the five chord. That's why they always sound good together. And in the key of D, D, E, F sharp, G, the G is the four chord, okay? So the nice thing about these six notes is they're shared by each key. So they're always gonna work. You don't have to know a key you're in. If you see a G chord or a D chord, just fire off these notes. It's gonna sound great, right? So, once we do this, add that kind of hammer on to open D, great transition to a D major chord. And then again, just like we can kind of use these notes to make little licks in between the chords, we can also use them to add to the chord. So right now, I'm just taking a regular D major chord shape, three on the high E string, two on the high E string, three on the B string, two on the G string. And then I'm just taking my pointer finger and moving it to that second fret on the D string. And now I'm opening up the G, I'm getting a totally different chord, but it has. Totally different feel, just by kind of moving that one finger right there, okay? So again, we're just kind of seeing this is just different things you can do anything that you want to. So just always remember this. Whenever you see a D chord, whenever you see a G chord, or you know you're in that key, these six notes are super easy to play, right? Playing open two four on the D string and open two four on the G string is actually much easier than even playing a G chord or a D chord. So if you can, if you have the ability to play these chords, you have the ability to start adding these notes in between them, right? You can even add them together as new chords, essentially. So like if I just take the second fret of the D string and the second fret of 
the G string right there and play it as a chord. I'm really playing a new chord. Technically, uh, like an A suspended chord is what this would be if I just played the bottom five, right? I can move this down to the fourth fret and I'm kind of making a new chord with notes that are available. And since all the notes that I'm playing are gonna be in that key, it's gonna sound fine, right? So again, recap, start. I think the best place to start is just regular G major chord. Again, if you're a human, third fret on the B string, and then work on hammering that D string there, slide, grab the G string, Randomly, it's always gonna sound good. You could add other chords. See? Now as soon as I hit that C chord, odds are I'm probably in the key of G, C being the G, A, B, C, the four chord in the key of G. In the key of D, C is also a chord that works pretty well, but technically I'm using notes from a different key to kind of get that, right? So, the main thing to take from this is G and D, two chords you're always gonna see. This spot right here is really easy because it's in the same area. You're not venturing too far outside of your comfort zone if you're just playing open chords, but we're getting into that fourth fret which is unused real estate for a lot of guitar players, right? So, that's what I got for you today. If you have any questions or comments, send me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website, and also check out the master class because it's on sale. So if you wanna learn more kind of tips and tricks like this with uh, really easy to play with backing tracks, we've got that in the master class. Also rocking some Emerald Rider merch because uh, I know you guys are thirsting for the new Rider stuff. So let me know what you think. Talk to y'all soon, thanks a lot.